Whoa, this is interesting. Hello, what is up guys? I'm your host Gordon and welcome to another What Am I video. Today we caught ourselves a really interesting blast over here. As you can see, this is the Lizzie Gecko, I mean the injection molded Lizzie Gecko 3.0. Yes, the same kind of Lizzie Gecko that I've reviewed in all of my video and this is apparently a 3.0 version. Wow, can't believe that Mac Potato is able to get me one of this for today's video. Mac Potato is a local Malaysia online foam dot blaster seller who sells rare imported foam dot blaster just like this guy over here as well as some gel blaster and now water blaster. If you guys wanted to get yourself one of these or know more about newer release, Mac Potato started their very own website as well as a Discord server. The link will be in the description down below. In the box, we got the blaster itself, a buttstock, a barrel extension, a grip, a bag of hardware, 20 darts, and a manual. Let us check out the bag of hardware. In the bag, we got the fiber optic side, nuts and bolts, plastic piece for the grip, and a pair of Allen key. Let us first install the grip. Align the plastic piece with the grip, screw in the bolts, snap the grip in place, and tighten it up. Next, slide in the buttstock, put in the nuts, and tighten up the bolts. For the fiber optic side, align both fiber optic piece to the hole and push it in. Then slide it on the rail. Friction fit the barrel extension, put in the darts, put in the magazine, and this is how the blaster looks like with everything installed. Okay, okay, first look at the blaster. As you can see, this is definitely, I don't know, I, I shouldn't call this weird. It is a weird but good looking blaster. Well, this is basically a Lizzie Gecko 2.0 being gucci up with some injection molded buttstock over here with some, you know, injection molded pretty high quality, you know, barrel extension over here and some injection molded nylon skeleton grip over here to complete the entire looks. After doing that, they call themselves the Lizzy 3.0. First, we got the infamous Lizzy 1.0 over here. This is an injection molded version. The one that I got over here is a transparent version. This is probably the one that a lot of people who say that this is a, a copy, a replica of the original Lizzy. And then they got the updated version, which is the Lizzy 2.0. Basically a Lizzy 1.0 with slide lock mechanism, effectively making the 2.0 sort of felt like an S200. And then we got this doodad over here. This is basically a Lizzy with a priming grip as well as a buttstock. And this is a foldable buttstock. You know, that, that's really cool. I need to do that again. Oh yeah, that feels really nice. But all of this is 3D printed. And now we got this. The buttstock is no longer 3D printed, all the attachment is no longer 3D printed, and it even comes with an actual barrel extension. Yes, this is a barrel extension. It is not a fixed suppressor because in there, there is actually aluminum tube that connects with the aluminum barrel in the blaster. So practically, this is just a Lizzy 2.0 with all the bells and whistles. So should I call this a Lizzy 2.0 Pro? Max. Well, that doesn't sound good. But anyway, let us get into the quirks and features of this blaster. As you can see, the entire blaster is made out of mixture of aluminum and injection molded nylon. And the weight of the blaster is actually pretty heavy. The buttstock over here, unlike the 3D printer version, is not a foldable buttstock. Basically, you are stuck with this length. So as you can see, shouldering this buttstock is a little bit weird because to me, this is kind of short. And the surface area at the back over here is, yeah, kind of small as well. But it is still okay. It feels kind of compact. Priming the blaster, not a big issue as well. So I would just let this slide, you know, slide. Other than that, the blaster also comes with a injection molded fiber optic side over here, which is sort of weird because they only provide it at the front, but not at the back. So aiming this blaster requires a little bit of eyeballing technique. The grip of the blaster is pretty interesting. It is a skeletal type nylon injection molded grip. Pretty nice and, you know, kind of a refreshing to me. Speaking about refreshing is the slide release mechanism. Because if we look back at the normal Lizzy 2.0, the slide release lever is actually the same lever that you use to release the magazine. You just pull it down, 
it will release the slide. This blaster, however, it came with a dedicated button to release the slide, which is in a pretty confusing position as well. Given that the button is located at a really convenient spot for a mag release button, every time when I'm trying to release the magazine, I tend to click on the slide release button. And seriously, throughout the testing, it sort of messed up my brain a little bit because of the button over there. But now, since I got used to it, it's no longer an issue. And there is also something weird about the reusability of other Lizzie Gecko magazines. All the previous Lizzie Gecko magazine can be inserted into the blaster. Just that the 3.0 version does not really catch all the previous Gecko magazine in place. It was just holding them using friction, which means that the 3.0 actually uses a different magazine catching mechanism. The Picatinny situation of this blaster, we don't get too much of a Picatinny reel on this blaster. The first Picatinny reel will be in front of the blaster over here. There is no Picatinny reel at the back of the blaster. And of course, Picatinny reel right under the blaster for your grip. Speaking about grip, the grip of this blaster seems to be, you know, pretty standard across all Lizzie Gecko. And same goes to the trigger pull as well. So yep, I guess that's all about the quirks and features of this blaster. So without further ado, let us go test the blaster out with some AF darts. Okay, okay, we are back. So the performance of the blaster is, I would say not that high. Without the barrel, the blaster shoots from 62 FPS all the way to 70 FPS. Generally, I would say it's sort of a Nerf Elite standard. With the barrel extension, however, the blaster can only shoot from 54 to 61 FPS. It actually lowers the FPS because of the barrel friction. So I would say if you are a performance oriented person, I would suggest you not to run the blaster with the barrel. If you guys are more of an aesthetic kind of a person, yeah, totally run the blaster with the barrel because it looks really nice. Accuracy wise, without the barrel, the effective range of this blaster is from 5 to 6 meters. In 5 to 6 meters, you can definitely hit the target. The accuracy is not bad. However, if you decided to run the blaster with the barrel, I would say 5 meters is the best it can go. Overall, operating this blaster, I did not encounter any jams yet, which is a good thing. The slide release lever functions pretty smoothly. Just that the position of the slide release button is on a pretty confusing spot. Sometimes I actually mistook it as a mag release button you just need time to get used to it and again for a person that is over six foot like me this short but stock definitely is something that you need to get used to priming this blaster might be weird in the beginning but after operating this blaster for some times i sort of get used to it but still i prefer a longer buttstock aiming this blaster might require some eyeballing technique as well because it only comes with one fiber optic side at the front of the blaster which means that you sort of need to know what you are doing when you are aiming this blaster yes there is a tiny iron side at the tip of the barrel extension over here but when you try to align your fiber optic sight with that iron sight at the tip of the barrel extension you can't really see that sight at all because of the elevated fiber optic sight some eyeballing technique might be required so yep that's all today guys like this video for the youtube algorithm subscribe if you haven't already remember to ring the notification bell button because more videos are coming up and of course i'm going to see you in the next video adios guys Yeah.